Hey everybody, it's Ribley back again. Hope you guys are doing well. So we're done, believe it or not. We got two little sections left to do, um, but we're pretty much finished out of the book <clears throat> as far as being able to do what we need to do to be prepared for both the AP and the CBE. So all right, I'll, I want to expand just a little bit on what we talked about the, the, with the Taylor polynomial, okay? The thing that we got to understand here is that f of x is going to equal, it's going to be exactly equal to the Taylor polynomial. Remember, this guy is, in theory, the nth degree Taylor polynomial, excuse me, plus the error. Now, if you remember in the, in the past, we, we've referred to this as Rn of x. So, for example, if I want to do f of x equals e to the x, which I know is also equal to the sums, then goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Okay, and I want this to be approximated by, let's say, the, let's go t, I want, sorry you guys, I want e to the x, I want e to the x to be approximated by, um, what do we want, um, let's go t sub 5 of x, which is the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so that's easy. Really all i got to do is build this guy out, right, so when n equals 0, this is 1, plus when n equals 1, right, I get x over 1 factorial, which is 1, plus x squared over 2 factorial, which is 2, plus x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, which is 24, plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, which is 120. All right. However, remember, this goes to infinity. This goes forever. So what remains is r sub 5 of x. Now, we could write that if we had to, right? That would just be the sum as n went from what? From 5 to infinity, or excuse me, from as n went from 6 to infinity, right? This thing could be represented as the sum as n goes from 6 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Now, we know that these, that e to the x and its Taylor series, which is really a Taylor polynomial, they are only equal to each other if r sub n, we know that if r sub n goes to zero as n goes to infinity, right? Then I know that these two, th I can claim that this is equal to this, right? Because as n goes to infinity, theoretically, r sub n should go to zero and you end up with the, the Taylor polynomial equaling f of x on the radius of convergence. You always, when you're dealing with power series, you always, always have to be thinking, what is my radius of convergence? Well, the cool thing about this is, the radius of convergence is all reals. That's a negative infinity to infinity. That works everywhere. Pick any point on e to the x, and it can be approximated by this guy. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to say, I want to know what e to the fourth is. Okay? And I'm going to say that e to the fourth is approximately equal to this guy, right? It's just the Taylor polynomial at 4, which is just going to be 1 plus 4 plus 16 halves plus, uh, what do I got? 60, ooh, this is going to get ugly, isn't it? 64 sixth plus 256, good gracious, uh, but uh, where are we? 24s plus 1,024 one twentieths. And then I could add this up. But the question is, the question that I want to know is, I know that e to the fourth is going to be exactly equal to this guy plus the error, the remainder. That's why they use an r, right? Uh, r sub 5 of 4. In other words, all those extra terms, that 4 to the 6th, 4 to the 7th, 4 to the 8th, etc., divided by 6 factorial, 7 factorial, 8 factorial, etc., if I were to just plug it in. So the question becomes, how big is this? How big is this? How far off am I? Because once I plug this in my calculator, which I'll do here in just a sec, once I plug it in, the fa in my calculator, how sure am I that I can use this as a reasonable approximation? The way in which we do that is we do it with the, what's called the Lagrange error bound. Now remember, hitherto for alternating series tests, Remember, that was just this guy, b sub n, times negative 1 to the n, right? And it doesn't matter where we start here. We knew this. We knew that absolute r sub n was always, 
excuse me, was always less than or equal to b sub n plus 1, as long as it was alternating series and it converged. Remember, if they don't converge, we're not having this discussion. It's, it's kind of like, if you can't talk sense, I'm not going to talk to you at all. And then we only talk sense if we're talking about convergent series. All right? The problem is, is, I mean, look at e to the x. It's not alternating series. It's a standard issue power series. What we need is an end-all, be-all for power series that aren't necessarily alternating. Okay? And that is the Lagrange error bound. So that's just a little introduction to it. So here's the Lagrange. Let's go, Lagrange error bound. Here's how it works. Now we've seen this before. Remember way back when we were doing numerical approximations? Remember everybody's like, wait, why do we need this? This this is crazy. Well, it, it, this, just bear with me here just a sec, okay? All right, here's how this works. I am going to write, I know the absolute r's of n of x, right? That's how you always write it. That just means the error is less than or equal to m. This is a big old m. Now don't panic. You'll, you'll see what, what we're doing here. If I go n times, or excuse me, m divided by m plus 1 factorial times x minus a, the absolute value of that raised to the n plus 1. Okay? Now, think about this for just a sec. Let's, let's just look at this. Before I do anything, I really, really need to define this guy, don't I? Remember back when we were doing the error bounds for trapezoidal and Simpson um, and, and midpoint approximations? We had that K. Remember that guy? And K had to be greater than or equal to the absolute value of, it was like F double primed of X on AB, right? Remember that guy? And it was the, the fourth derivative if we were talking about the Simpsons approximation. Well, we're going to define M similarly. Similar, M is defined as M is going to be greater than or equal to um, the absolute value of the N plus first derivative of X on, now think about this, this is going to be X minus A absolute x minus a less than d, all right? So now the question is, whoa, and the question is, is what are we talking about here? Where are we looking? And sometimes you'll see this in text written as z or d, and really those guys are between uh, x and a, x and a. Okay, now I know that's lousy notation, but once you've seen it done once or twice, you won't panic anymore. So think about this. Remember back when we had the error bounds with the Taylors and the, or with the um, the Simpsons and the trapezoidal approximations and the midpoints? We it was basically on the open or excuse me the closed interval between A and B. Well, really, what we're talking about here is between either A and X or between X. And a, it it works exactly the same way as the error bounds. And like I say, after a little bit, you'll have it. Okay, so let's do a quick little recap. I know that e to the x is equal to the sums n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. I know that the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for this guy, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be what one plus x plus x squared halves plus x cubed. 6 plus x to the 4th, 24th, plus x to the 5th, 120th, okay? Now, remember, I know that e to the x is equal to the 5th degree Taylor polynomial plus r in the backs. All right, so I'm not going to do e to the 4th. I'll just, let's do, let's do e, okay? I'm going to do, I know that e to the 1st is equal to, is approximately, excuse me, equal to the fifth degree Taylor poly polynomial at one, which is gonna be one plus one plus a half plus a sixth plus a 24th plus 120th. And we'll figure that out on our calculator a little bit. But the question is, is what about the remainder? In other words, how far off am I going to be? How big is this? How about this guy? Right, so watch how this works. The first thing that we got to do is we got to figure out what a and x are. Well, the, we know that this guy right here is centered. It's a Maclurian series, right? It's centered at a equals zero. 
So I immediately know that a equals 0. Now, excuse me, where it, what is x? Well, th if, you, if you really think, it, since this guy is centered at 0 and I'm plugging in the value at 1, I'm not plugging in at 0. If I plugged it in at 0, I'd have an exact match straight off the bat. However, what I'm doing is I'm plugging in x equals 1. So I've got an a equals 0. And I have an x equals 1. So I'm basically what this turns into when I have to deal with this god-awful monstrosity right here is I'm going to be on the interval from 0 to 1 and I'm going to find the max value of the n plus first which in this case is going to be the sixth derivative of e to the x and I'm going to figure out where it's biggest. Okay? And then I'm going to call that m. And then the rest is just a piece of cake. So here we go. I know that n equals 5, so see, notice what I'm plugging in here. I know that x is going to be 1. I know that a is going to be 0. I know that n is going to be 5, and I'm going to figure out what m is. Let's figure that out right now. So the sixth derivative of e to the x, the sixth derivative, what did I do there? The sixth derivative of e to the x, I guess I could just do this. Oh, that's ugly notation, but bear with me. <laughs> I apologize of e to the x is e to the x, right? e to the x looks like this. This is e to the x from 0 to 1. So I'm looking for the max value. Well, if I go from 0, here's where 0 is. Remember, I'm on the interval from 0 to 1. The max value is going to be out here at e to the 1, isn't it? So that's what I'm going to let m be. m equals e to the 1. Notice the biggest, I want the value that's greater than or equal to the, in this case, the sixth derivative because n is 5 on the interval from 0 to 1. So I'm going to let m equal e. So back to it. You ready? Remember, r n of x, I'm sorry you guys, I apologize. The absolute is always going to be less than or equal to m over n plus 1 factorial times absolute value of x minus a, whoops, x minus a to the n plus 1. Well, we've already identified m equals e. I know that n equals 5, because remember we used the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, right? x equaled 1, because that was the value that we stuck into the polynomial to figure out what e was, and a equals 0. Now, all I got to do is play. Let's see, r sub n, whoops, r sub 5, excuse me, uh, of x, which is 1, is going to be less than or equal to e divided by 5 plus 1 is 6 factorial times x is 1, a is 0, so 1 minus 0 to the n plus first, which is 6. It doesn't really matter because it's just going to be 1. So this whole thing is going to turn into e divided by 6 factorial. In other words, Think about that. Let me click back. This number right here is going to be close enough to e that I'm only off by what? e over 6 factorial. You guys, that's e, which is about 3, divided by 720. Don't take my word for it. Let's look. If I pop up my calculator, I'm going to have to move back a little bit, and please don't panic with these Lagrange errors. You're not going to use them a whole lot. You need to be able to identify them, okay? But please don't panic. Now, watch this. Oops, I forgot to clear all this stuff out. Pardon me. Whoa, second quit. Get out of here. Second quit. All right, so you ready? I know that 1 plus 1 is 2, so 2 plus 0.5 plus uh, 1, 6, I can't do, I hate 1, 6, I, I don't want to be approximating, plus 1 divided by 24 plus 1 divided by 120 equals 2.71666, ooh, sign of the devil, you got to be careful. So if I go second e to the 1, which I know is the real value, you see what I'm doing here? I'm going to test between my Taylor approximation for e to the 1 and the actual value which my calculator is capable of doing. I just hit enter and 2.7. Now look at this. I'm going to take the difference between these guys, but wait, 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 let me get crazy. Let me, or let me not get too crazy. 
the Lagrange error told me that the absolute biggest that my error can be is E divided by 720. So let's go second E. Actually, I can go second answer, can't I? Because it's just E. Second divided by 720. And let's see how far off I am. 0 0.003777. Okay? Now I'm going to do a little trick with my calculator. Let's see if you guys can see it. This is the actual value of E. This was my approximation. And this is what... Lagrange guarantees is the biggest that my error can be. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2.71828 blah 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 and I'm going to subtract this guy from it and let's see how close we get. You can probably already see that we're going to be well within the bounds, but don't take my word for it because I could be lying. You guys know me. I will do that from time to time. Now let's see if I can get the calculator to do the hard work for me. If I go second entry that one, I don't want that one. Wait, whoa, whoa. why did it do that? Well, sorry, you guys. Um, I gotta, I'm got i going to have to get craftier. Second entry, because I don't want to have to do this a whole bunch of times. There we go. Whoa. Second entry. Don't mind the crazy guy. Okay, let's hit enter on this one. And then I'm going to subtract second e to the 1. This thing got a little glitchy on me. And let's see what happens. Now, remember, what I, the answer I get had better be smaller than, what did we say, 0 .00377. And show sure enough, it's a heck of a lot smaller. This was, this guy was approximately 0 0.0038. And the actual thing that we got, notice there's a negative here, but I take the absolute value of that because it's error and it's the way in which I subtracted it. The actual error, actual error is 0 0.00162. That's awesome. And we're done. That's how it works. So let's recap real quick, just really quickly. This is, I promise it won't take long, this is the equation. This gives me the ability to figure out the error for any power series, not just alternating power series. All right? Now, it's the, it's the error between, it's the error between the nth degree Taylor series. So that really, what it is, is it, it's the actual if I take the actual function minus my nth degree, if I take this guy and I take the absolute value of it, this is equal to the error. This is how far off I am, right? Because in theory, as long as the remainder goes to 0, f of x equals t sub n of x plus r sub n of x, right? So all I got to do is, I got to go easy. First thing I got to do, step one, locate your center. Find the center, which we refer to as A. Find that guy. All right? Part two, ID, identify what X is. In this case, X was 1 because I plugged in E to the first. Had I been trying to do E to the fourth, then X would have been 4. Had I, been pl had I plugged, if I wanted to know what E to the negative 5 is, then X would have been negative 5, and then i got to be careful in here with all that good stuff. Okay? Number three, Find n. Find n. And then number four, find m. And then last but not least, all of this comes together and use this guy. You'll get practice with it. Remember when we dealt with the air bounds around uh, Simpsons and trapezoidal and midpoint? You guys are like, what is this? Oh, this is awful. And then you're like, yeah, that's pretty easy. That's not so bad. It's the same thing here. All right. Cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for your time and attention. Have a really good day. Okay? See you tomorrow.